as with most learning structures, it's good to go over the theory, but the real learning comes when you actually get on the command line and do some labs. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to set up the lab and then we're going to take it from there. So let me open up Firefox and this is um, EVENG. This is the lab structure that I'll be using. Now we've seen in the theory that we have a routing engine and also a PFE, a packet forwarding engine. And we're going to simulate that here. So let me just open up the node and it's going to be on the MX platform. So I'm looking for Juniper VMX. Now this VCP will be our routing engine. So let's take one of those. And we also need our packet forwarding engine. Let's move that up here somewhere. Yeah. And I'm looking for the VFP. Excellent, and we're going to join these with our EM1 internal interface. So not our FXP. Now this FXP is like a management interface and we're going to look at that in a bit more detail when we get into our interface section. But we're gonna connect these with our EM1 interface and here also our EM1 interface. And when we scroll down here, you can see that these are all the um, other interfaces on a line card on our packet forwarding engine, which we will cover. But for now, we're gonna connect them with EM1 int. Okay. And let's start this. Now I know these take a little while to boot up, so I may actually pause the video and wait till it's booted up. All right, that's been about five minutes. I would presume that that's enough time for the chassis to be up. And this VCP, Again, I'm assuming that means virtual control plane, which is where the routing engine is going to reside. And VFP is virtual forwarding plane, which is where the packet forwarding engine will reside. So let's get onto the brains of the bot. So we're going to double click, click on the VCP, which is our routing engine. And let's just make this a bit bigger so that we can see it clearly. 16 should be good enough. There we go. I'll probably zoom in anyway. When we press enter. Now, the first thing we see is previously we saw that the whole software platform is based on FreeBSD, which it says explicit here, explicitly here. We also see that it says Amnesiac here. Now, if you ever see Amnesiac on a Junos device, that means that it's booted in with a default configuration, hasn't had a system name set or any configuration, and it boots into Amnesiac. Now to boot into a device when it first comes up, we just enter root and press enter. And you see now that we have like a shell platform here, a squiggle and a hash sign. Usually that will be a percentage sign, but you do see this sometimes. And then what we do is we type CLI and that sends us into operational mode. Now here we've also seen an additional message come up which says, auto image upgrade, which I don't want. So to get from operational mode into um, configuration mode, you can either type configure, which a lot of people do, but I type, now they do the same thing. And I wanna get rid of that command. So I will say delete, did it take it? Yeah, I'm gonna say exactly what it says here. Delete chassis auto image upgrade. And then I'm gonna commit. So let's, did it take the paste? No, okay, delete, chassis, auto, image, upgrade, and type commit. Now we shouldn't get any or more of those messages come up. This is only because it's on this platform. Usually what you would have to do before you do any kind of commit, you're going to have to set a password for the device and also set a host name. So we're going to do that now. Set system host name. We're just going to call it router coach VMX1. And to set the password, set system root authentication. We're just going to set it as a plain text password. You press enter. I'm going to add my password on this device. I'm just going to put Juniper and again Juniper. So now we've set a host name and we've set the root authentication password. 
Let's press commit or type commit and press enter. And you can see that we now have a prompt that comes up that says root and the host name, which is router coach or RC VMX one. That means that it's successfully taken our host name and our password. All right. So we're here with the hash. The hash means that we're in configuration mode. Now we want to go and run an operational command. We could either type exit that will take us back to the carrot and operational command, or we can type a run at the beginning. This run here means that we can now put operational commands. If you know other vendors like Cisco, they have a do to do the same thing. On Juniper, it's run. And I want to see what interfaces we have. So run, show, interface terse. Guys, I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you want to know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. And we can see all of our interfaces here. We've got LC, PFE, but the ones that I'm looking at are like these ones, GE000 right down to GE009. Now to explain the way that interfaces are set up, I'm probably going to have to run into a graphic. So let me do that now. And the graphic will be something like this. This is our chassis here. Now our chassis, big chassis here, and this is a fictional chassis, but it's based on the MX960, whereas the MX960 will actually have like 12 slots, but mine only has my fictional Juniper MX device here has um, six slots. So we have slot zero, slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, and slot five. But before we actually get into the slot configuration and how that works out, you need to know what is your media type. So Juniper interfaces follow this format. They follow the format of type hyphen, and then say FPC slash pick slash and slot. Yeah. So our type here, now the type is what kind of media will be running over this interface. Now it could be FE, which would mean that it's a fast ethernet. It could be GE, which is gigabyte ethernet. It could be XE, which means that it's like a 10 gig ethernet. It could be something like SO, which stands for like your SDH or your Sonic interface. And then you could have like logical interfaces like AE, which is like your aggregate interface or a lag or ether channel on other vendors. Or you could have like L0, which is a loopback interface. And there's loads of them. GR for GRE. There's absolutely loads. I wouldn't be able to remember them all. But this is the type, which is the media that will run over the interface. Then you're going to have your FPC, which is like your housing or your line card. And your line card will plug into one of these slots. So let's take an example of our line card plugging in here, which is slot two. So then it will start off with like GE slash. And because it's plugging into the FPC is plugging into slot two, you will have a two followed by a slash. Then you need to understand that we have physical interface cards that can plug into these FPCs. And these physical interface cards are logically divided into like pick zero or pick one. So in our fantasy device here, if I draw out this, you see that we have pick zero and we have pick one here, and that's going to physically slot into our FPC. Now let's take, for example, we're using this one here. So that will be pick zero. So your interface will now look like GE dash two slash zero, which is your pick. And then you have another slash. And let's say we choose this numbering here. Our numbers go down the side from 0 to 9. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on pick 0 side. And also 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on pick 1 slide. We're going to choose this slot here, which will be the fifth one down. So it will be the fourth slot. And this will be our interface numbering convention. GE-2 slash 0 slash 4. And that is how the interfaces work out. So if I go back onto our virtual device here and I say something like run show chassis 
hardware. We can see that we only have a single FPC which is going into slot zero and we have only one logical pick which is also pick zero and then if we do a run show interface terse we could see all of our interfaces are gigabit ethernet going into FPC zero in pick zero and this one will be the first one this will be the second slot this will be the third slot fourth slot and so forth and that is how our interface conventions work out okay so it's question time question one what two parameters have to be completed to be able to log in and save configuration to the device without an error message choose two Question two, how do you save the configuration on the Junus CLI? Question three, what is the interface naming convention on Junos OS? Question four, have a look at the diagram. Detail the port configuration of the 10 gigabit ethernet port being highlighted. Question five, how does the Junos two tier hierarchy sit? Choose two. Question six, when you get a brand new Junos device, what's the default username and password combination needed to access the device? 